All right, it's uh, Tim Morge. It's Advanced Trading and Advanced Portfolio Trading. It is the 14th of November. How y'all doing? So it's been a week since I've seen all of you. Lots of homework poured in. Thank you. Uh, Pete, those folks may know all the answers and do not need to respond. I Okay. So Northwestern was good. Um, they've got me all set up now. They're, it's uh, the GI group has their own hospital building, actually. And um, the floor that I was on, they haven't renovated yet. They're not going to renovate until early next year. So I have a corner suite, which is like it was a two-bedroom hotel room. And then uh, next to it, I have a single, which is they put an office in there for me. Uh, since I'm going to be there for three weeks, um, and I'll be mobile, I just have to stay in the hospital. So I've got like <laughs> three, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, because over the holidays, the place is going to be a ghost, you know, a ghost room. So it was nice. Um, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think my kids and my wife are going to show up at Christmas. Um, Sean's got a uh, serious young lady. Uh, they've been going out for almost a year now. And uh, Lucy has uh, all-state jazz tryouts right after Christmas. So um, I think they have things to do. So anyway, I will uh, be spending three weeks basically uh, vegging um, about, from about the 10th of December. But we would only have about another week of class, and then we'd be off for the rest of the year anyway. So, um, no, you can't visit me. I'm really, I'm a really grumpy guy. You don't want to see me in the hospital. Trust me, my wife doesn't even want to see me. Um, and I have, I have no, under, no idea what this is going to be like. But uh, that's okay. So let's see. Uh, saw my mom, and uh, actually, as we speak. They're putting in a 25-foot oak tree in front of her house. Anybody other than Ouija having trouble with sound? Sorry, Ouija. It's not that I don't like you. Uh, let's see the attendance. If the if the Slack attendance went up, that is really strange. Well, whatever. Not going to worry about it. As I said, I looked over the list and looks looks like they should be here. Uh, there's like yeah, it is. It does seem like today. Um, maybe people didn't understand when I'd be back. Anyway, all right. So we're, today we're going to talk about something that is uh, it's dangerous as a teacher to be talking about. But it also fits in exactly with what we've been doing. So we've been talking about the markets. And we've been talking about, oh, uh, this recording or the, the past recordings. Um, Kevin says that he's, he's found a that he has, what's the word? He has found a way to resurrect the sound. And uh, after the session, I, I will peruse them. And if the sound is there, I will post them. They're meaningless without the sound. I looked at them. It, it, basically, you're looking at you know, a chart for the whole thing. So um, without sound, we're basically dead. So. But Kevin thinks that he can do it. So or he's, de he's done it, I said, because I was gone. So he had a list of things. Also, uh, we have new cameras in the room, which means uh, some of you will be doing recordings with me and a um, whole bunch of new stuff for the new year, um, stuff I have to practice, including me standing at you know, a uh, huge chalkboard, um, which, which uh, charts 
uh, and then I can draw with my finger. And I have no idea why we think that's better, but we're going to try it anyway. So <clears throat> let's uh, let's go back to think, thinking about what we've been doing. We've been talking about pure patterns, right? How many of you think you actually found pure patterns? Okay, got one. Okay, got two. Okay, Pete's not sure. Okay. All right. If they're pure... You should be able to close your eyes right now and see them, number one. So close your eyes. And you should be able to generate a line picture, a line chart. Secondly, <clears throat> those of you who have been around a long time, like Scotty, for example, You've heard me more often, but you've also heard Shane say, actually, I don't even have to draw the line and know exactly where it's at. How many people have heard me say that? Pure pattern. You can see the frequency. You can see the pattern. It's right there in front of you. So once you find a pure pattern and work it over, and really internalize it, it actually will pop right out at you as it forms and you'll say, oh shit, that's the whatever, or whatever you want to name it. That's the owl pattern. Weegees, did you finally get sound? When you say, I can see too many lines in advance in this part of seeing the pure pattern. Yes, exactly. Especially when a chart is crystalline. So when it definitely does turn on the frequencies that it should turn on, then you can see the median lines in advance. You can see the um, a forms. Okay, good. It, it tells you much more about what I was saying. It seems uh, I don't seem quite as crazy as I used to, huh? Um, you can see the a, the a form, and as the B swings, it's easy to see the A B C and project even the B C D. And it's not just the median lines you're seeing, it's really the pure pattern. How many of you found a second one? All right, now, you don't need 100. You don't need 50. Everything I find seems to look like the first. Well, Ken, Ken then study the first to death. Because what I started to say is, <coughs> if you're disciplined, and can stick to that one. And find the right time frame. You don't need more than one. Well, Al says there are many variations to a pure pattern. The truth is there's one pure pattern. Then there's other things.
and you'll have to decide how much freedom you want to give price away from that pure pattern and still decide hey you know what I I know it's um, you know uh, B formed a little bit over here or um, it's gone a little farther here and the shoulders forming differently but I think it's still the pattern okay question for you when you're trading how much is pure pattern versus tape reading no no they're they're see you're you think they're different they're not people that are reading the tape okay listen carefully people that are reading the tape in many ways now they're not seeing patterns like setups like you're seeing but they're seeing small patterns that repeat over and over all of this is the consensus of the crowd isn't that what a pure pattern is we talked about that we're going to talk about that today tape reading is the same thing you're reading the consensus of the crowd and if you get good at it you can see the crowd turn before the crowd knows it's turning but that's we'll go there but that's more difficult than reading a bigger pattern which is what we are working on right now bigger fatter more information tape reading is finer faster plays out quickly <coughs> but there's still patterns all right so again what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit dangerous and I believe actually uh, I, I, I won't be I won't give it away um, so we're talking about the crowd and consensus and you can see once you practice like I said you don't need a hundred you don't need 50 you don't need 10 if you have one two three patterns that you can see and you practice them and you understand what their results are so you know the risk reward and they have a positive outcome that's what you trade and as that pattern unfolds you have a jump on the market because they don't even realize that they're dancing to that tune you know you've seen people maybe maybe this is for all older people name that tune how many notes do you need to name that tune ever play that game or see anybody play that game or seen it in a movie you make me feel old there okay there we go it's the same thing here Okay. Um, he look at look. It's not usually ticks, but it's you know how many bars, how many how many parts of a pure pattern do I need to see before I know this is the pattern ahead of the group that's making the pattern. Have you seen many pure patterns that happened 20 years ago but do not happen now because the crowd giving the consensus has changed somewhat? No. Same game. We Absolutely same game. In fact, I'm going to show one today 
um, from 1987. I'm not going to show the 1987 pattern, but I, I guarantee. But I can tell you right now, if I had the data in front of me, it looks the same. Also, in the 90s, I mean, I've seen it repeat over and over. So that's that's not a problem. All right, so let let's let's think about this idea that the crowd. You know, I I had the word a minute ago. Someone else will have it. Um, there's a word for birds when they fly together in a group and they t they know to turn with each other. Anybody remember the? The word we used it before, and I've lost it. I'm sorry. Murmurations. Thank you, Aaron. Exactly right. So synchronicity that works, but murmurations what I was, what I was looking for. So <clears throat> we see that if you if you think about it, that's what's happening in the market. People hopefully not like you or me, but people in general, they trade in murmurations. They trade as a crowd. They trigger each other, generally incorrectly. Then they end up chasing price as a group. Does that make sense? Can anybody give me an example that we've seen in the last six months? Major murmuration. Hi, Petra. I see Petra typing. Brexit. Exactly. Boy, and so far Brexit has been the trade that just keeps giving the pound. Thank you, Jesus. Um, yes. Now, let's talk about Brexit before we talk about what we're going to talk about today. So, step by step, let me get rid of this. Dr. Morange. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm good. Hey, I was just calling. I'm on my way over there, but Andy's there, and I guess he knocked on the door, and nobody answered, and he can't get in that garage. I'll be right there. I'm, okay, cool. Sounds good, Tim. I'll see you in a minute. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Guys, I'm going to have to put you on hold. That's actually my builder, apparently. My wife uh, is asleep, so I'm going to uh, mute myself. I'll be right back.
My apologies, guys. Let me see if I can do this. Um, do you think with the advent of all the social media has made this herd mentality more pronounced versus decades ago? Um, I think it sped things up, Mike. Uh, let me read through the rest and I'll give you an anecdote. Um, Starling flocks, it turns out, are best described with equations of critical transitions, systems that are poised to tip to be almost instantly and completely transformed, like metals becoming magnetized or liquid turning into gas. Each starling in a flock is connected to every other. When a flock turns in unison, it's a phase right there. Nice, Gina. Switch to videos if you want to see. I always thought they were good. Yeah, they are cool. Um, changes at the edge. Do I want to know why you did work on this, Gina? Were you trying to apply it to the markets, or? I think it's, uh, saw the markets and birds and fish going. Okay, um, it's very. I've seen some computer work on it. It's very computer intensive and on. Fortunately, I believe the consensus that I got from the two physicists that were studying it was you'd have to be in the flock to understand the change. If you were trying to get an edge on the change. So my answer would be <coughs> this: the murmurations are forming the pure pattern and rather than try and be in the flock anticipating, we see the pure pattern and we know that they're going to turn with the pattern. You either believe that or you don't. There's a television show I think called Algorithms that talks about code. The theory is that each bird has to keep track of each of its closest five numbers. Mike, where'd you see that? That'd be fascinating. Hopefully it's on like Netflix or something. Netflix, okay. <clears throat> All right, good, cool. All right, so let me think where the hell I was. Okay, so um, do I think with all this advent of social media, has the herd mentality been more pronounced versus decades ago? All right, I. It's election night, okay? We'll go back to Brexit in a second. It's election night, and I'm drive. I'm in a. I have a driver. Um, you know, I have a security detail, and I have a driver. Um, and he's from Serbia. He's huge, and um, I was at my mom's having dinner with my mom and seeing my sister, and uh, and her husband, and um, my other sisters. Uh, youngest who, who's uh, actually 35 and uh, so we were at dinner and um, he picked me up around 730 at the restaurant and um, we started for the hotel and um, I take this back this is the day after the election so we started for, for the hotel which was at that time of night, it should have been about 40 minutes away. We got to Ohio Street, if you, Ohio and State, if you know Chicago. So about four blocks away from the hotel, and all of a sudden we couldn't move. And for about 15 minutes, we couldn't figure out what it was. Anybody know what it was? Yeah, it was protesters. <clears throat> but here's, but there were no police to be seen. And they were 12, 15 blocks away from where it all started and in a completely different direction. And the reason, and I would say it's murmurations, the reason why they were able to keep track of each other and move is that so many of them were just holding up, that's uh, not George Soros, um, so many of them were just holding up their, their they were, they're young kids that have nothing better to do, Pete. We're right in the middle of it. I'm watching them. Going, what? And so they're holding up their cell phones 
so they can all see each other's videos and see exactly where they are. It's called, it's called a flash crowd. And so uh, it took us, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes to go the last four blocks because they kept, you know, it wasn't, wasn't like a parade. They were there, then they weren't there, then they were somewhere else. So no matter where we went, all of a sudden they'd show up, murmurations. So, um, yes, I think social media has enhanced it all. Um, you'd be shocked how many people, especially younger people, think trading is the way to go and the way they're going to make money is that they're going to connect on social media. Well, we are. Actually, we're connecting on social media, if you think about it. But just like chat rooms, they're going to give each other the tips on what's going where. So as a crowd, they're going to move in murmurations, correct? Make sense? Yeah, so it, is, it, it enhances and speeds up the process. And the other thing is, lost my thought there. Right, let's, go to, let's go to Brexit. What did we see? Let's take it apart. Just, just try and put that all together in your mind now. Clear your mind. And think about the pieces that helped form the pure pattern for Brexit. What did we see first? Now, we're going to describe the entire experience. No, before I run up, What was going on? Be more specific, John. Okay, there was a debate, and then what? Okay, polling, then there was a consensus that they were going to stay in the EU and everyone was leaning in one direction, right? Correct? Okay, at that point, if everybody thinks they're going to stay, <coughs> don't, don't go there yet, Ouija. If everybody thinks they're going to stay, Where's the risk? The risk is that they're going to leave, right? And catch everybody leaning on the wrong side. Correct? Okay, then, what did we see in the markets? We have the consensus. Then how did the markets react? We had a vertical run up in the pound, right? Ultra bullish. Everybody, it's like a flash crowd. People were playing safe and going one way. And to me, David, let me let me let me add to what you said. Not only were they playing it safe and going one way, but I didn't even I never understood why they thought that the pound was going to have a massive rally since it was expected, right? If the expected happens, why isn't it status quo? I would have thought it would have been bland, like, okay, well, okay, so I guess we're saying in the EU, let's just go to sleep. 
as a trader, that's what I would have done. Okay, good night. Okay, so then we get this rally out of the hole, and we get all the way up to really massive overhead resistance. And then what happens? Well, why was there pain? Why? Why did it crash? Why did everybody run out the door? What do you mean the consensus was wrong? What happened? Yes, but what happened? They voted to exit. Thank you. Be simple. They voted to exit, and then, of course, everybody was positioned the wrong way, and there was nobody around to take their position when they wanted to exit, correct? And, of course, that makes, exaggerates the move. Is that the way to say it? Catch everybody leaning the wrong way, it exaggerates the move. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a failure pattern. One on this size you don't see that often, but in panics, I have been through, I can't tell you how many stock crash, stock market crashes. Um, I'd say about a third of them I wasn't able to trade because I was intervening for the Fed. But that's okay, you still, you still get to watch. You just watch from the sidelines as you intervene. But I've been... I've been trading the SP Future since they started. Um, you know, well, I've been trading long before they started. And when they started, I've been trading the S&P Futures the entire time. As you know, I don't particularly love to trade them. Um, the pound, until recently, has not been one of my favorite currencies, but for some strange reason, I've gotten in this. I think it's Gina's fault. I've gotten in the step with the pound and made quite a bit of money off the pound in the last... 18 months or so. Um, so, you know, things things come in to favor with you, come out of favor with you. Um, so, again, we saw a big run up. We saw everybody leaning the wrong way. The news comes out. Then there's a run for the door. Now, it may or may not have been tradable. Believe me, there are people that are fast enough to trade that, but trading in that kind of frenzy, you better have deep pockets and you better be good. Being lucky is not enough. Yes, I did see a pure pattern in Brexit. It's a, uh, a pattern I see it's not a it's not a pattern that I see that often, but it's a pattern that I see um, best way to describe it. Panic. I call the pattern panic. It needs other dimensions of price right other than that on the chart. I think it needs other dimensions besides price, Ouija. How about that? So that's why I've been talking about crowds, 
crowds leaning events because for all of you to go farther in trading as I said earlier um, when I got back so it would have been maybe October maybe well whenever I got back um, I keep saying don't watch the news don't pay attention to the news turn the news off and I know that you all have the news on so I might as well give up that sermon and teach you to put some of that you know, if, if you don't have it on then you can eliminate that leg but those those of you that do of course all right Pete I'm gonna call you on this on election night did you have any idea how the election was going no you didn't answer my question well if you did then you obviously have news on don't you Pete <coughs> so <clears throat> it's easy to say no I don't watch the news but it's not so easy to not be influenced by the news you can be I think I gave this example at one point, um, and maybe you went around, Pete, I was in the elevator in the Mercantile Exchange with um, my buddy Dro, and a guy said to me, hey, aren't you the guy that uh, draws those forks? I said, yes. And he said, I have to blah, blah, blah. November lumber against January lumber because of and then he gave us some news item and I'm wondering you know what the fork says well there's news right there can we learn to look at news as propaganda and not truth well the problem is Gene is sometimes it is truth true When the, well, can you just trade the chart? Yes. <clears throat> the better you are at the pure patterns, the better you are at, it, it's like, Gina, let me give you an example. Let's say you're sitting at your desk trying to trade, and there's a little, I pay a little kid to shoot spit wads at you. You know what spit wads are? And after about 18 months, you get to the point where they don't bother you anymore. The first six months, you beat the kid up five times a day. But after a while, it's, it's just no, you know, it's not even noise. It's just, you're oblivious. But it's difficult. And, depending on the news it's extremely difficult alright so Brexit everybody even the people that weren't trading well I was out I was it was during my surgery so I get a pass but short of that almost everybody was what's the vote did they get the vote? What was that vote? True? I mean, Brexit changes people's lives. Forget about trading.
So people have a reason to want to know what the answer is. Now, the trick to that one, Gina, is do I let it influence what I'm doing in the market? So in Brexit, there is a panic pattern. And again, you don't see it that often, but I will have to say this. We've seen it more often recently than we have ever seen it before. Um, that During that 1987 period, we saw it two or three times, but it, it seems like it's showing up more and more now. Um, I don't know if the markets are moving faster. Certainly the times have been rather turbulent, and we'll see whether or not that continues. It's not just one person. It's not just one country. Um, things have just gotten turbulent. Waiting for Pete to. Uh, well, the velocity of news has never been faster. I mean, Ted Turner started that with CNN, right? Which then matured into what's going on in the internet. Some of that is news and some of it is crap, but it's still out there. And you're right, it's, it's instantaneous. And it used to be that if Walter Cronkite didn't say it, it didn't happen. Now, some kid with a camera posts a video, and that's obviously the truth. Can you see the difference? There used to be some vetting in who was reporting something. These days, if it's on the Internet, it's true. Certainly my kids believe that. So, we're going to talk about election night. Uh, Pete, you told me you were short going into the election. Why? Just curious. I mean, you can say, why not? It's fine with me. I'm just curious. No, I want a description. I don't need the chart. Okay. So you had a pattern that you've seen before. I'm about to put up an S&B chart, so. Are you short-term trading it? Was it daily? Okay. Oh, trading puts, uh, okay. All right. Not quite the same for me, but okay. So you had some short exposure, I guess is what I'd say. Anybody else uh, have a, uh, a position, a stock market position that night? Ah, so Scotty had, okay, Scotty had some stocks. Now, if you have actual individual stocks, Scott, are you watching the election and worrying about Whole Foods, for example, or it, it, irrelevant? Okay, rock time. Okay, good. What you got, Ken? Sold interest rate futures. Okay. 
So when you say the height of the panic, what do you mean? At what point and why? Did you open a position? I was surprised the market moved with the elections. I thought nothing would happen. Luigi says, okay. Luigi, I was in the 1.30 a.m. Wednesday morning because of your Brexit video. Oh, okay. All right. Well, good for you. Um, because we're going to talk about the elections relative to the Brexit position. So, Ouija, I actually uh, was enjoying, I was actually in my hotel room. I got in a little late after uh, going out to dinner with, my, or not to dinner, going out with my, uh, the gentleman's going to be doing my surgery in December. We've become good friends. He's the cousin of Dick Feynman. So, uh, we were out exchanging stories about Professor Feynman and some of the other physics people that um, that we both know. Um, he's a little bit younger than me, but a geek meeting, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, we thought it was funny, but I'm the people sitting next to us probably were like, "I wish these two would go drink somewhere else." Oh, I was having tea, but anyway, I came back to the room. Um, I had I left for um, Chicago the day before, and my wife voted for myself and and Sean and her in Arizona. There are polling boxes all over the place. You just put your ballots in the polling box, it, and it sounds like something out of the 1800s, but that's how it works. That's why, for example, if you might might have wondered why it took them so long to to call. Arizona is because they're literally going around to these boxes, driving around in cars, emptying the boxes, then taking them somewhere and trying to count them. And in a lot of counties, like this one, this is the largest county in the United States, there's lots of boxes and not that very many people. So it takes a long time to call. So anyway, um, let me see if I can get a chart up here. Do, do, do. There we go. This, I come in to the hotel room. Can you guys see a chart now? And um, I order food right around here. And to be honest, I'm, I'm not watching the market. I wanted to watch a movie. I'm in the only certified five-star hotel in Chicago now. It's called the Peninsula. Anybody ever stay there? Keep trying to stay there, and every time I try and stay there, it's full. But anyway, I'm in this uh, room. It's uh, $1,750 a night. Not what I paid. I got comp long story but beautiful room and uh, food is good service is magnificent and the last thing I'm thinking about is trading trust me um, I met I met a doctor who's gonna do this long surgery in a month and went out and had a nice uh, nice time with him and came back to the hotel room and ordered room service and it's right around in here and I turn on the TV and I go where's the pay-per-view TVs. I'm looking for, there's got to be something new out. Like a Captain America movie or, you know, something. Nothing. Their pay-per-view is down. So I said, that's fine. I'll watch HBO. I turned on HBO and it's election coverage. Well, well Discover usually has like the last person in Alaska or whatever it's called or dangerous catch or something I'll try the discover channel turn on the discover channel election coverage election coverage or no matter why I turned on so I called down to the front desk and they said 
Yeah, I don't know. We called the cable company. <clears throat> it seems like all the channels are flashing election coverage, and we're working on it. But So it was watch nothing or watch election coverage. And now that I think about it, I actually probably could have used my tablet if I wanted to, but that would have been awkward because it's you know, 12 inches and I'm trying to eat. So I'm sitting there. Now, put yourself at 5 o'clock in the afternoon or 6 o'clock in the afternoon or 7 o'clock in the afternoon. I think the polls close in Chicago at 7 o'clock. So let's say 6 o'clock in the afternoon in Chicago. What did we know about the election? No, no, Trump was not leading. Well, I mean, it was like 58 to 50. But no, what did we know? Hillary had it in the bag. It was the Hillary show. Okay, nobody liked either one of them that much, but it was obvious that Hillary is going to win. Nobody in their right mind could possibly vote, right? Well, we are listening to the mainstream media, just like Gina, just like we were listening to the mainstream media in Brexit, right? You can only hear what you can turn on. Oh, well, okay, but let's, we're doing a dialogue. I'm not doing it. I'm not teaching you what to do. We're doing a dialogue of what, what you could know at that point. So the mainstream media... Well, he had a few more votes, but I mean, they were clearly she was going to win at seven o'clock. Clearly, they were projecting that it'd be fine because she'd be winning Michigan, she'd be winning Pennsylvania, she'd be winning North Carolina, she'd be winning Florida. Remember? Now, does anybody remember? What started the rock slide? It was pretty fascinating. I was about to turn off the TV, and then this geek came on. No, it wasn't the WikiLeaks. This guy came on, and uh, he said, hey, and he I don't know who he works for, but they actually, every channel that I had, and we had about 40 channels, yeah, it wasn't it, at this point Trump wasn't winning Florida, but here's what he, here's what was happening. He was looking at the northern counties and he was saying, you know, I just noticed something really interesting. In these northern count and this is not a uh, um a commercial for Trump, but in these northern counties, this geek says, in 2008, this county has 6,050 people, 1,100 people voted. In 2012, about 2,200 people voted. Now, we don't know the results of this county, but over 6,000 people out of 6,050 voted in this county this year, which is kind of strange. So I looked at the county surrounding it, and this is something that's going on in all these counties, these little counties that normally don't have much to do with the outcome. There's a massive turnout. So we'll ha And he said, so we'll have to see how that plays out because we don't know which way Florida is going to go. And of course, which way did Florida go? Yeah, it started for Trump and it kept right on going. And at that point, that's when you started to see the people around Hillary get a little nervous and a little, little more nervous. And it's also, if you look, take a look at the chart, it's also when the stock market started to sell off. 
because people were all leaning one way, weren't they? Everybody knew, whether they liked it or not, that Hillary was going to win. She's going to win by 4 to 7 percent. Remember? And then a little crack appeared. The crack got wider. Now, <clears throat> I didn't even think about the stock market here. I mean, this would have been a nice trade. Somebody might have caught that. I don't know, Pete. The risk is obviously sure that she wouldn't win. Now, the pure math of it is, if you don't win Florida these days, you're not winning this election. And especially if you don't win Florida and Ohio. If you, if you win Florida and Ohio, you're going to be pretty hard to beat. But if you lose them both, there's no route to victory anymore. So when Florida started to look a little dicey, the stock market which was all leaning one way, started to unload positions. Does that make sense? So this pattern is the same and yet different from the Brexit pattern because the first move is obviously clean. Can you see it to the downside? It's a beautiful move to the downside. <coughs> Everybody see it? But it's not people loading up on a position, it's people unloading their position, yeah? So it's a... The reason behind the first leg is a little different, but the pattern is the same. You can see it's a clear, clean move in one direction. Just like the pound ran from 143 to just over 150. Clear and clean. Are you with me so far? Now, as this unfolded for an hour and a half or so, and at this point, I've had dinner. Um, they do something nice at this hotel. You order dinner. You order dessert. They actually bring your dessert 30 to 45 minutes after your dinner. They come right back to the door and bring your dessert and your coffee and stuff so it doesn't sit there and get crappy. So I've had, I've had food. And then, you know, the, the dessert shows up. And then I called down and got a couple more Diet Cokes because I, you know, still wasn't sleepy. And I'm half paying attention to what's going on the TV. Florida is going badly at this point for Hillary, although they, ha they have refused to declare it for Trump. And then somebody says, this is amazing. Do you realize the Dow is down more than it was after 9-1-1? Of course, they were wrong because they had stopped trading. That's the only reason that the Dow wasn't down further. But it did get my attention. I was like, well, how much is it down? And then somebody said, the Dow's down like 900 points. And, and I thought, 900 points? Where's my laptop? So I pulled my laptop up and drew this line. And I mean, it's in a free fall. And I called Michael. I said, you know, what the heck do you think is going on? He goes, um, I think people are afraid Trump is going to win. And they're all positioned for Clinton. And I said, it looks like it. So I'm watching, and I see a little bit of a rally, 
and I see it come back down and touch. Now I've got two touches. So I've got vertical, what? <clears throat> Perhaps in the horizontal, yeah. And even better, for me, even better, if this is vertical going into horizontal, is that a line of force or a line of maximum excursion? Yes. It works either way, Ouija. Um, even better, if this ends up going horizontal and we change direction, who's long? Nobody. And, of course, it's relatively late at night for the S&P, so it's not like there's a lot of liquidity. They're looking for liquidity, but nobody's stepping up. I'm talking to Michael. I'm saying, he, I, what, I think he's the big bad wolf. He hasn't even been elected yet. Let's say he pulls off the upset. And at this point, he's still far from my upset because there's Michigan and all the other stuff that he has to put together. But, you know, they're all crazed at this point. I'll tell you what went through my mind is, A, I've seen this pattern before. So if I start to get some buyers, I know what to do. But, B... This is November. This guy doesn't take office until January. Doesn't this seem a little bit severe? Now, this is where it gets dicey for all of you, okay? Making those kinds of judgment calls, letting yourself think about, has this gone too far? Is this kind of thinking crazy? Um, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Those are things, you know, that if you're, especially if you're not careful, you can blow your account on that. Do you understand? The only way you can trade on this is, well, it is an outlier event. That's why I call it the panic one. But if we take the same size risk, it shouldn't be a problem. There you go, Ouija. It has to be what? One stop. Right? Just one stop. But that's where people get into trouble. It has to be just another trade. People, in events like this, now, forget about it. If you don't live in the United States, forget about it. If you live in, or think about Brexit if you don't live in the United States. If you live in the United States, I don't care who you voted for, you had an opinion, and if you're like my house, it was probably, you know, fairly contentious. So you have to make sure that if you're going to trade on something like this, it's just one stop. You can't get stubborn. You can't let the size of your conviction have anything to do with the size of your trade. Do you follow me? People lose their entire accounts on these types of trades. So I, I was hesitant to talk about it, but it's so like Brexit. I did want to show it to you. But as I said, this pattern is showing up more and more, this panic pattern. So it's at least worth studying. But again, remember, no matter how strong your feelings are, you always trade the same size, and it's always 
one stop, right? You just make it one stop. You get stopped out, Gina, you go kick the door away and go, those assholes, go back to bed. Or you don't trade. Nothing wrong with that either. So I pulled out my laptop and I took a look and now I'm seeing crazy vertical. Maybe we'll see horizontal. And you can see at this point, I'm not going to bother drawing the square, but you know, we're, we're definitely slowing down, right? I don't see buyers yet, but what I do see is the market slowing down. Again, it's late at night. What I'd like as we leave these tops, I'd like to start taking one or two of these tops out to show me that there's buyers. So again, I leave a higher low. And we've been down there three, maybe four times. I leave a higher low. Well, that's actually not so bad. Let's leave it up there. And then I just extend it forward. You guys must have seen me do this a million times. It's just, yeah, well, I, I, at this point, it's not the election keeping me awake. It's the, but the charts at this point, I'm like, wow, really? I know, I don't care if they're, I don't care why they're forced. Just, it doesn't mean anything to me, Pete. <clears throat> and if you've, if you've never traded limit down, you probably should watch it. a few times before you trade. A lot of times the limit downs, Pete, when they come off the limit downs, they really rebound hard. But you need to study that yourself and see how they trade. All right, so I actually, where's my circle? I actually got in right here. This is where I started buying and bought for a while because there really was no, it took a while to get any, any significant position. I didn't put the fund in, but I put all of me in. What did I see there to buy? I saw all these bottoms. I started to buy here. I didn't load up, but watch what happens. I buy 10. Then we start to take out the highs. Then I start to put bids in at higher levels and get filled. And I'm buying all of these. Now I wanted to take the top of the shelf out. Well, here, 10 contracts, is not really going to feel it, but it, it's going to give me the rhythm of the market. Then we start to take this top out. Now I need to be long, and of course, no one is long. I'm nowhere near as long as I want to be, but I'm long some. I, I, I go to bed, just leave a stop with Michael. 
Unfortunately, I sold them all out at at break at uh, S and P up about a well the Dow up about a hundred basically. I mean, I left some money on the table, but it was more because I wasn't awake and paying attention, um, and was really wasn't being greedy, but. Vertical, horizontal, started to fish, started to grab some more. He had plenty of opportunity right here would be the perfect entry as far as I'm concerned. Taking out the high, gone. You can't wait too long because this is a panic pattern when it does start to move in the other direction, it's going to move as fast or faster, just like Brexit. Does everybody remember the pattern from Brexit? Let me look on the... There's a longer term one on here as well. It was though. Do do. No, that's not it. I could I have overwritten it. Let's try this. And there we go. Um, I mean, we've got multiple cluster bottoms down here, which would have provided support. But you can see this is the this is the day, and basically, it, unless if you wanted to go with long term structure, it's about a fifty point stop. Uh, a lot of people typing, but I don't know. Doesn't they don't seem to be showing up? Let me check my Slack here. Is it a beautiful trade? No. Is it a is it a pattern I've seen before? Yes. It's a, I said this is this panic pattern. I don't understand in Brexit you traded against the consensus, but this sell off was okay. So. You weren't listening. Let me just tell you again, Ouija. In Brexit, <coughs> it's not what causes the first move. It's the first move, then the second move. Okay? It's the physical, it's the chart, if you will, Ouija. We can talk about it, Brexit. And in this case, it's almost... Uh, like a photographic negative, but the same chart idea is going on here. Everybody's one way, they get out. Then the event happens, then we get movement in the other direction. We're not interested in when we look at the pattern, Ouija, we're not interested in, okay, here's the consensus. Okay, now here's the anti-consensus. What we're interested in is what the first, we're not interested in what made the first move, but the first move followed by a pause, followed by a second move. Because that second move, if you think about it, no one is positioned for that second move. Go ahead and ask questions. Um, when they well, here it's not so much that I smell blood; it's, it's as much as it was the Dow's what 
and I pulled out my laptop. I mean, if you say to me, the pound is down 22 cents today, the first, and, I, and I'm anywhere near my laptop, the first thing I do, we use a trade, just pull out my laptop and look at a chart. Aaron says, is this a pattern you can draw with lines into a pure version? Um, yeah, I can see it. But as I said, this is probably something, the pure version I've probably seen in the teens, maybe 12 times, 15 times, something like that. But it's becoming more frequent. It's, a, it's an exaggerated, the way to think of it, Aaron, it's an exaggerated vertical into horizontal then everybody pays because they don't have the position. The size of the pattern is huge. There you go. Think of it just, yeah, Gina, yeah, like, well, like a giant V. Well, but there's horizontal in the middle, not a V bottom. So I like what Gina says, which is the size of the pattern is huge, but the actual structure looks familiar. If you just shrink down the chart and forget about that it was Brexit, forget about that it was Donald Trump winning the election, it's really vertical, horizontal, and then the reaction. To be honest, without any highs being taken out to show buyers, I would not be able to take that trade. Okay, I have no problem with that, Al. But you've seen me, hang on, uh, hang on a second with Perry. I'll read what you had to say. You have seen, cursor, cursor, there we go. You have seen me look for a chart and not be able to find it. Yeah, 1444. You have seen me draw these lines, these frequency lines, Al, over and over and over. And as I said, the best place to load up for me would be right here. <clears throat> because as far as I'm concerned, the pane of glass is over here. There it is. I wonder if I can... This is the pane of glass right here. Now, if that's the pane of glass... I don't care about price taking out this high or this high or this high or this high. This is where you guys make a mistake. I don't care about any of these highs. We've, we've been over this 50 times and yet it stays in people's minds. I don't care about this high. That's yesterday. I don't care about this high. I don't care about this high. What I care about is price makes its first thrust, comes down and leaves a higher low and an even higher low, and then takes out its first thrust. I want to buy this one, and this I started to anticipate here when we made the higher low. But the big one is I got to buy with both hands once we take out this first thrust higher. Okay, so Perry, confession of a dummy. No, I, well, I wouldn't say that. I was an idiot. I bought the low. Okay. Then on ES 5% limit down, I got worried it could jump over my stop, so I bailed, thinking I would watch it reopening it back in. I was also getting tired of trying to stay with it. I had it, but blew it. I was, I was, I bought watching the chart, not knowing we had 5% limit stop, then blew it. Having me go over it makes me feel it all over again. Well, I'm sorry, Perry. Um, you should all know where limits are, and limits are dangerous, no doubt about it. Um, so you should know. Can you know, can you afford a limit? But I t I'll tell you, if you go take a look at the stock market, these price bumps really, you know, are uh, often good opportunities, but I'll leave it at that. Can I ask you again, what were the signs of buyers in the horizontal for you? Yes. Trying to make a new low, can't. Trying to make a new low, what is it? Well, I don't even care that it's limit, but, you know, we don't go there. If it's limit and we bounce off of limits, these are buyers. 
Think about it. If you, I mean, I've traded a lot of limits. If you see limits, they're stuck at one price with everybody offering. This isn't this isn't good for a limit. If the limit is down here and people start to buy, and believe me, it wasn't the Fed, and you come back and take out this high, this limit is gone. Okay. Um, on the far left, we, ha we have a thrust, a higher low. Take the first thrust out. Why is that not a buy area? Isn't, isn't that what I'm doing? Or, or are you talking about over here, Aaron? Are you far, talking about even further? Well, can you give me a time or something? Twenty-one fifty-four. Uh, we're well here. We're still going down. Thrust. If you think this is a higher low. Yes, but we're not taking out this high. We're not taking out this high. More to the left. Well, still more to the left. We're falling. We're still falling, my friend. We're not taking out any highs. We're still making new lows. Yes, this is horizontal, but we're not taking out the high, and then we blow through the low. So you better take a look at the difference between this and this. There's a difference between this and this. Ouija, go ahead and type. Sure. I'm, can I say the bottom sticking gives you a sense of buyers and the pane of glass for you? It's not only that, Ouija, but at limit down, generally, here's what you have at limit down. Everybody wants to sell. There's, you know, 12,000 offers to sell at limit down, and there are no buyers, and it stays stuck to the bottom. When you move away from limit down like this, and then try and come back down to limit down and are unable to make it down to limit down and then st start to head higher. That is a very strong sign of buyers. I don't really want to talk too much about limits because most of you are not going to be trading at limits. First of all, it's scary shit. Second of all, most of the stuff you trade are seldom going to be trading in markets to trade limits. A limit is that the exchange won't let you trade any lower. You can sell there, but you can't sell any lower. You can buy all you want there, but nobody in their right mind wants to buy it limit down because of course it's going to go quote unquote go down. Limit down in this case was actually the bone. You're right, Perry. But it takes either complete stupidity, which maybe that's what I have, or lots of practice trading at limits to trade limits. But I don't want this to be about limits. I want you to think about what Gina said, which was it's a big move, but if you shrink the pattern down, it's simply vertical, horizontal, and then, of course, parabolic which is a pattern that we've looked at over and over and over again. I trade, uh, yeah, sure, bellies are different, so is orange juice. <coughs> um, do you like the small high activity bars at the low, which I don't see anywhere on the chart? <coughs> well, this is more the small activity bars, Ouija. Dang it, here we go. This is more like what you see at limit. One tick, two ticks, and that's it. And you'll see them like flatlined for an hour or so. That tells you, you know what, go to bed. But when you actually see this, these are some 
frisky buyers because remember if they want to get out they might not be able to get out they if the if the market goes here there's no buyers right so is a little is this uh, you know higher on the risk scale absolutely but I would tell you that uh, bond limits and stock market limits they're they're nothing like orange juice limits, belly limits, those types of things, pork belly limits. Even the, even the, we haven't seen grains that much recently, but when grains go limit, sometimes they go limit for quite a while. So, distill it down, I like Gina's idea, distill it down to vertical, nice horizontal section, signs of buyers, and then it goes parabolic. <clears throat> if you can't see it, or if you see the, if you see and know that it's limit and you don't want to screw with this, leave it alone. Do they often continue past after limit? In other markets, Perry, let's, let's talk about orange juice. In orange juice, they trade to the limit, then they have a smoke break, which means they have a 15-minute cooling off period. In the pit committee, it's five guys meet and decide whether they want to keep the same limit or expand the limits. So let's say uh, orange juice is limit up, right? Then they'll let it go again after 15 minutes and it goes limit up immediately. Um, the last orange juice one I was in went up seven limits before I took my profit, and I think it went another limit and a half before it turned. You needed some serious Kenokis to buy limit down in those days. Missed those days. Yeah, but those are, we're going to more of a European market style, which is basically they're pulling these limits or making them so wide that they're less important. And they're allowing things to just trade. And it, you know what? If they trade through the limits, then good luck. So, which is actually, if you think about it, more of an American style, which is laissez-faire, hands off. They're letting things trade. And um, that's okay with me. If you don't like limits, Perry, then stay away from them. So you need to figure out, you know, in the S&Ps, what would limit cost me? Uh, I don't think I want to play with that one. For me, it's okay because, again, I've already seen my share of limits, excuse me, and this is not the activity of a market that's full of people that are long. Remember, the limit's there to try and stop the people that are long from just obliterating, but look at what we've done already. We've done a lot of work. And then when we see it come off the mat, at this point right here, again, I'm anticipating a little bit, but I'm not buying much, but at this point, it's open season. Once it comes off the mat and starts to leave higher lows and then takes out a shelf high, the, the limit's not going to be the thing to worry about. Well, Perry, if it bothers you, then you just dump it. <coughs> Actually, Ken, grain futures limits don't have to last all day. It's up the exchange now. Although, generally, I don't think they really care anymore. They're actually capable of just saying, we're coming back in a half hour. All those rules have changed now. Which, as I said, they're going to a more European-style market. So, But we haven't had limit grains in I, I don't know how long. Is that your usual tick frame for ES, or did you just adjust tick to price action? Um, I, I grabbed, John, I actually grabbed. It's one I look at. Um, but I grabbed my laptop. It's what was there. I had that and I had volume and frankly the volume looked like crap. It, did, it didn't represent price well. 
I started out with daily, then I went to tick. <clears throat> daily, 240, didn't look, um, they, they didn't cut enough for me. Several people are typing. So I'll go a few more minutes and then uh, I'll see if I can get the videos to work. Can you show how you saw this panic pattern on the Brexit chart? Uh, not today, but I will, Hansel. I'm not on that box. I'm not on that computer. Would this not be acceptable under the higher low if we bought the pullback after the first show was taken out? Yes. Ouija, I would suggest that because otherwise you're going to be playing with if it goes through limit, then you have to wait for limit, and you'll have to eat the whole limit. So yes, it, it, it will it will seem like a relatively close stop, and maybe not the size of the structure you normally would trade in. But otherwise, your stop would be in limit, which means not going to help you. It seems to me that having the right time frame is yeah, it, the right time frame is very important. You have to pull it up, take a look at it, and then say, uh, no, I need something different. Is this panic pattern more of a context for this first thrust, high or low, take out the first thrust pattern? Um, I have to go back and look, Aaron. I don't. I don't want to say it off my, off the cuff. Um, it's it's it is certainly this vertical, horizontal, vertical, but. If I, I don't want to cut it any any finer than that without going back and and um, and making sure because we're the problem is we're not talking about a thousand iterations as I said maybe fifteen eighteen what you got with you and. Gina, if you want to see the Brexit chart, pull one up. Can I summarize the backbone of the pattern? We get a panic one direction move, go horizontal, find a low, find a door is the way to say it. Then buyers or sellers, depending on which way you're going. Yep. Then this is what you'd like to see: a first thrust up, a pull back to a higher low, and then take out the first thrust high. I, and ideally, then you could find some frequency and an area to buy, ideally. Because these things move very fast, okay, so if you if you don't find your way in quick, look how fast it moved once it started to move. So yeah, so you either see this or you don't. Now, let, let me just tell you right up front, I didn't make a massive amount of money on this. The risk reward wasn't even that great. Maybe it was five to one or six to one. Um, I just, you know, I took the trade because A, I was in Chicago and um, got, you know, shame on me, I got drawn into the markets. But, um, you know, once I started to, to uh, watch the market it became I could see the pattern became clear to me and as things unfolded as I thought they should I took a position and it has to be quick so you know this as big as this looks the size of the profit compared to Brexit is, is not there yeah you know I I, I have I have to tell you, it is like playing a computer, a computer game for me, Ouija, so um, sometimes that's a bad thing. It's a little bit why, why I'm worried about my son and son having a trading account that I'm not monitoring. Because he's 18 now, so it's his money. So <clears throat> I, I'm not monitoring it. Any other questions? Hopefully today I'm going to render this. I'm going to get the other 
I think I owe you two more videos and we'll get those up from Kevin. There you go. There you go, Pete. Well, last time I talked, you were really down in the dumps. You were getting stuff and now you see you hit a few that just feel great. So this, this clicked for you, Gina, huh? Good. I'm glad we covered this breakfast style trade more and knowing which side the risk is on, et cetera. Okay. Well, the key, I think, is one of the keys I wanted to talk about is where's the risk? And I thought about not showing this because it is, in a certain sense, an impulse trade, right? And certainly a, a, a difficult one because, you know, you're near the limit and there's a lot going on. But we talked about Brexit. This is uh, a mirror image of Brexit. But um, the key to both of these trades is they're panic trades. And it's because people don't understand what the risk is. In this case, nobody was long. So when it got down to limit, there was nobody left to sell anyway. So again, not a massive trade. Brexit was a, was a massive trade. This one's not a massive trade. It's, nice, it's a nice chunk of money, but risk reward was just okay. Uh, stop. I would rate on a scale of one to five, I'd rate, I don't know, unless you did exactly what what uh, Ouija suggested, which is to use that really close stop, which my, dang it. Now for me, it's dicey to whether I get this line to work. Fine, that will do. Um, for me, it's hard for me to go to the market on the amounts that I trade. So whether or not I'm going to get filled at a reasonable price, if I put my stop here, which is what Ouija's suggesting, once we come here, because I don't want to screw around with limit. I might have gotten executed, and I might not have gotten executed. The higher low was not classic structure, but it's what avail what's available, and especially you guys, you don't want to play with, you know, that's fire down there. So if it does make a new low, it's fire. You're in trouble. Perry, if you're uncomfortable, just leave them alone. Stay away from it, okay? So I started to say stop, I don't know, uh, one to five, I think it's a one and a half. It's a, you know, it's a pretty iffy, but given the circumstances, and you, you're not going to, like I said, I've, I've traded this pattern, this the panic pattern maybe 15 times, so it's not something you're going to trade that often, but generally... The stops are kind of iffy, but this is probably this one probably has the worst risk reward of all of them that I've traded. Um, the stock market was already at such new highs; it really just didn't take off the way I thought it would. I thought we'd get probably about twice as much the pop that we got, and we didn't. So, and you know how much I love the stock market, so. So I took my money and walked away. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Anybody else? Okay, I keep, I keep threatening to send out invoices, and hopefully today I'm going to do good on my – once I get the videos up, I'm going to do good on my threats. So um, invoices should be coming out fairly soon because we're behind. All right, have a good Monday. We're back to work. See you all on Friday. I think that's the end of the holidays, isn't it? 
have a good week and uh, just pray that Kevin knows what he's doing because I don't. Oh, my pleasure. I'll see you all on Friday.